The numbers don't lie. Our humble home, the Earth, is getting warmer every day. Since the second phase of the Industrial Revolution kicked off, back around 1850, the average global temperature has gone up 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Before then, the Earth's annual average temperature had only fluctuated by a few tenths of a degree from year to year. This unusually large change in temperature over a relatively short time is the result of unchecked human industrialization on a global scale. In the afterglow of his joyride up to the edge of Earth's atmosphere, Jeff Bezos declared the need to move all heavy polluting industry from Earth's surface up into outer space. Toxic factories in outer space sounds like heavy-handed science fiction. But as the billionaire founder of Blue Origin, Jeff Bezos is one of a handful of people with the resources and access needed to make it a science fact. But is all this talk of moving our trashiest industries to outer space realistic, or is it just a good PR soundbite? Let's get into it. This is Space Greed. Humanity's production and consumption has been steadily on the rise since the Industrial Revolution. Our collective overconsumption starts with how much we eat. In the last 60 years, production of cereals has more than doubled, and the total amount of meat produced? It's nearly tripled in the last 50 years. There are more humans eating more calories than ever before. When it comes to the stuff that you can't eat, like aluminum, oil, plastics, and other carbon-producing resources, the growth has been even steeper. Over the past 50 years, iron ore consumption has increased six times, and aluminum consumption has increased a hundred times. All of this non-stop production and consumption generates a never-ending stream of toxic pollution and carbon. Atmospheric CO2 has now reached 416 parts per million, the highest it's been for nearly a million years. This extra CO2 was helping to trap heat and driving the unusual increase in temperature. But historic droughts, melting ice caps, superstorms, and sinking cities are only a few of our future problems. Right now, air pollution causes severe illness and an estimated 8 million deaths per year. When it comes to outdoor pollution, air, water, and soil are all vulnerable to industrialization's destructive impact, and they've all been polluted incessantly over the years. When we breathe, we've got to deal with particulates in the air. Particulate matter pollution is a mixture of solid particles like dust, dirt, soot, or smoke, and liquid droplets in the air. Some particles are large or dark enough to be seen with the naked eye. Others are so small that they can only be seen using a powerful electron microscope. Some particulate comes directly from a local source, like a construction site, factory smokestacks, or industrial fires. But the majority of particulate pollution is formed in the atmosphere through the complex chemical reactions of pollutants emitted from things like power plants and fuel-burning vehicles. Microscopic particulate pollution is so small that it can be easily inhaled and cause serious health problems. Particles smaller than 10 micrometers in diameter can find their way deep into your lungs or even your bloodstream. Ozone is an inorganic molecule made of three oxygen atoms. It can be good or bad for our health and the environment. It all depends on where the ozone is found in the atmosphere. Ozone up in the stratosphere is considered good because it helps protect all living things from the sun's harsh ultraviolet radiation. Ground-level ozone is bad because it can trigger health problems like wheezing, coughing, and chest tightness. Ozone pollution is the result of hydrocarbons and nitrogen oxide emissions from cars and trucks mixing together in the presence of sunlight. Water pollution is more common and widespread than you may think. Water pollution comes in many forms, and it's almost always thanks to human activity. Oil spills, improper sewage treatment, human and animal waste, and agricultural chemical runoff from farms. You don't have to drink toxic water from the source to be affected by it. Toxic chemicals can accumulate inside of living beings, and over time, these chemicals can travel up the food chain, ultimately impacting the health of humans. It's not just the air and the water. The earth can be polluted all the same. Soil pollution is the degradation of land due to the presence of chemicals or other man-made substances in the soil. If the chemicals don't make the soil unusable, the toxins present will get absorbed by the plants that grow in it. As producers in the food chain, these toxins get passed on up. 
We've always been messing up the planet, but believe it or not, we are much less polluted now than we've been in the past. Major cities in the Western developed world were once pollution ridden. New York had many famous bouts of smog in the 1950s and 60s. Many of the Western world's polluting industries have been moved to the developing world. So while our air may be cleaner, our consciences shouldn't be. Just to make this super clear, offshoring production hasn't eliminated the pollution, it's just offshored it. Kind of like when your mom asks you to clean your room and you just shove everything in the closet. Which is just a nice way to say that we've paid not to have to see the problem that we created. All this offshore production does is kick the pollution can up the road into somebody else's backyard. The pollutants released will still affect the entire planet. Statisticians quantify the total impact that pollution has on human health using something called the Disability Adjusted Life Year, or DAILY. Mortality alone doesn't convey the impact of disease. One Disability Adjusted Life Year represents the loss of the equivalent of one year of full health. Dailies for a disease or health condition is the sum of the years of life lost due to premature mortality and the years lived with the disability due to prevalent cases of the disease or health condition in a population. Diseases that cause premature death but little disability can be objectively compared to diseases that don't cause death but do cause disability. The most toxic industries based on the total number of dailies are used lead acid batteries, mining and ore processing, lead smelting, tanneries, small-scale gold mining, industrial dump sites, industrial estates, chemical manufacturing, product manufacturing, and the dye industry. Offshoring any or all of these toxic industries to outer space would have a huge impact on the health of humans and Earth alike. First off, whether we're harvesting materials, building factories, or disposing of industrial waste, it's going to require shipping key materials up into space. Currently, getting stuff into and out of Earth's gravity well isn't cheap, but that could soon change. For some context, shipping a 20-foot container from mainland China to the United States costs about $2,500. If the container is filled, total cost breaks down to about $0.05 cents per pound. Shipping goods via air freight across the same distance costs about $3 to $5 per pound. But as of today, the cost of shipping stuff from space to the Earth is a lot higher. The cost of cargo on SpaceX's Dragon Cargo spacecraft is over $9,000 per pound. Depending on the total distance and economies of scale, SpaceX claims that this cost could come down to about $1,000 per pound. NASA aims to reduce shipping costs to hundreds of dollars in about 20 years and even as low as tens of dollars in about 40 years. But sending up raw materials from Earth and importing finished products may not be the most economically viable setup. Instead, we should look outside Earth for raw materials. Asteroids contain a practically inexhaustible supply of metals and metal ores. Flying to and from asteroids to space-based manufacturing plants is going to be cheaper than flying raw materials out from Earth because Asteroids have lower gravity, and hence rockets require less power and less fuel to lift off. In 2014, the first object in space was made using 3D printing technology. The company has since won a contract from NASA to build its Vulcan Manufacturing System, which is a robotic system that can build stuff in space using over 30 different materials, including metals, plastic, etc. But what about just taking out the trash? Can we continue to manufacture stuff on Earth and dispose of toxic industrial waste in space? Well, when it comes to ordinary garbage, the US produces 200 million tons a day. No matter how cheap it becomes to launch stuff into space, sending this much garbage mass into space isn't gonna be feasible anytime soon. This is only gonna be feasible for specific types of highly toxic waste. But as you'd imagine, Firing highly toxic waste into space on powerful rockets has its own issues. At present, the most successful rockets still have a failure rate of 2 to 3 percent. Even if we could reduce the failure rate, all it would take is one failed rocket takeoff to spread radioactive waste into the atmosphere and the oceans. Generating energy is one of the worst polluting industries on Earth. It's by far the largest source of greenhouse gas emissions, accounting for a whopping 75 percent. More than 80 percent of our energy still comes from burning fossil fuels, which generate CO2 emissions. Fuels like coal, which generate other dirty pollutants in addition to CO2, continue to play a significant role. These dirty sources of energy account for more than 10% of energy consumption in the United States, and even larger fractions in many developing countries. 
shutting down polluting power plants and moving them to space doesn't make sense. But the future can still be bright, thanks to the sun. One interesting idea is to build solar power stations in space and beam the energy back to Earth using microwaves. NASA says the technology to do this already exists. In space, the solar power plant can collect energy 24 hours a day. China's Academy of Space Technology is working on building an orbital power plant that will capture sunlight, generate energy, and beam it back to Earth using microwaves or lasers. Some scientists argue that space should be off limits for human development and must be protected. The argument is that places in outer space, like Bellus Marineris, which is the largest canyon in the solar system, are as deserving of protection as the places of value, like the Grand Canyon here on Earth. Conserving and studying unique places in space is a key part of how humanity will learn more about ourselves and our place in the universe. It might one day become possible to move some industries to outer space in the future. The necessary technology to get it done is still several decades away. Meanwhile, consumption patterns down on Earth aren't changing. As the world grows more industrialized, the total pollution generated continues to grow at breakneck speed. Regulating or reducing pollution on Earth should be our short-term goal. As it stands, the people with the most resources are excited about the future, while the people with the least resources have to contend with the burden of pollution and climate change in the present. For more videos like this, subscribe to this channel right now and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any great content. Also, look out for CuriosityStream on social media. Links are in the description. Thank you.